Oh, look at it. This thing's done some growing. It's kind of looking like I pulled out of a dumpster fire right now, but it's done a lot of growing. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. Is everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Hanging outside with the dog, getting some last minute repots done before it's time to move plants inside. This right here, Xanthosoma Limezinger. It's one of my favorites of the elephant ears. I realize I haven't really talked about it that much. So here we are. Let's talk about it while it's laying here in all of its glory. Okay, elephant ears, broad umbrella term. Probably one of my favorite groups of plants. There's so much variety. Xanthosoma is one that's not talked about that often. And to be fair, that's largely because there's not a lot of variety. When you have the alocasias, you have beautiful ones over here like this Ludia. Got the blizzard back there with the beautiful variegation on it. Have the Borneo giant. Oh, you can't even see that. We we'll try it again. Borneo giants with the huge foliage. Leucocasia, which are great. Okay, don't judge the leucocasia. The, for some reason, the ground squirrels really like to chew on the roots of that one. So it's been on the struggle bus and you just dig it up and start it over. Colocasias. So many different colocasias to choose from. We got the bikini teenies. The gorgeous variegated pharaoh's dream back here. It's even more, but that's all I really have sticking around that I feel like talking about right now. Because the point of the video is to be talking about why this one's awesome. The Xanthoselma. These are beautiful, beautiful elephant ears. I bought this last winter. I got four of them from Hertz. I think it was Hertz. They shipped them out when it was extremely cold and three of the four didn't make it. This one well, it did. It eventually rebounded. You can see what's going on in here. I had this sitting in a pot over there by my coconut palm, and I could have sworn that I repotted this in the springtime, but clearly I did not. Oops. That's okay. Pretty stuff. Stuff. <laughs> Pretty tough, sturdy plants. You can see why they have that name, Limezinger, right? That beautiful chartreuse, green foliage. Xantha, I believe, means yellow, pretty sure. Soma, body. This uh, Limezinger is, I mean, it's the main one you're going to see when you're out shopping. Xanthosoma, there are a lot of caladiums and other plants that are listed as xanthosomas, but they're not actually xanthosoma. I believe these are hardy zones, eight and up. I'm sure you could overwinter them in 7B, maybe a very, very, very warm protected site in 7a they're not one of the most cold hardy but they have an extremely exotic looking leaf so you can see what makes them different from all the others i was just showing you and that they have a really deep cut at the top of the leaf there it's extremely windy okay i'm gonna pop well, pausing for the wind october 1st fall is coming in with a bang it wants itself to be known it's getting cold too it's not that cold today don't want to repot when it's too cold as i was saying look at that deep cut that sinus is really extreme on these. So they have a more, I think, a more exotic looking leaf. Anyways, the veining, you can see nice big veins in there, similar to what you see on the leaves of a Leucocasia, the Gigantia Thai Giants. Something else I like about them is you're getting a mixture of characteristics with these leaves. The sun is so hard to work with this time of year, but you get the picture, right? It's just a beautiful looking plant. It has a beautiful leaf on it. These will go about two to four feet tall and they will spread. They'll fill out an area. They're great if you want to have them at the edge of a pond or grow them marginally because they absolutely love moisture. Indoors, the care is going to be different. Maybe this would be a good time to go ahead and repot it. We can talk about that some more. So what I have here is a blend of all-purpose mix with some chunky bark, some perlite, and a whole bunch of sand. Want to be able to hold on to moisture but still drain freely. That's going to help prevent root rot. And then, of course, the moisture retention is going to help the plant over there because, like I said, they do tend to be thirsty. You can see there's a lot of sand in there. Can you see it? Yes, look at all that. Lots of chunk, a leaf that fell in there. There's some horticultural charcoal in there from one of the blends that I put together. Overall, it's airy and drains well. That's what we want. Good drainage and moisture retention. Pretty sure I've said that like three or four times. So you get the point there. This is going to be going from a six inch pot into a 10 inch pot. That's probably just about perfect. Go ahead, pull the dead stuff out from below. Got a whole bunch of that on there. No surprise, things have been growing a lot. The more they grow, the more little dead stuff going to have on the inside. This is, oh yeah, okay. That's a lot of root. A lot of root. No surprise there. This is another reason I wanted to make sure to film this because well, look at that. That's pretty cool looking. 
This would also be an opportune time to go ahead and pull out some divisions, but I think I'm going to wait until later in the year because I'm only a few weeks away from moving plants inside for the winter time. And then I would end up having these little divisions that are missing pieces of root and everything, trying to get them started and adjusted out here and then, then moving them inside and they have to reset again. I think that's just too much for them. So not going to do that, but I'm going to come in here, make sure to loosen up. You can be my helper. Thank you, Turbo. Appreciate it. Try and loosen these up without breaking them. They're very slimy. It feels like pasta. Just want to disturb that circular motion that's going on down there. Otherwise things get root wrapped and everything just becomes more complicated moving forward. Lightly tickle the outside of the root ball and y'all know the rest. I'm going to put it in there and backfill it with soil. Okay. Quick and easy. That was one of the easiest attempts I've ever had at unroot wrapping a plant. They were so pliable and soft. You know, sometimes when they're dry, can be a nightmare trying to get them to untangle. Oh, and of course, don't want to forget to water it and settle that soil. This is a root stimulator, help kick things off, get the plant established more quickly and help avoid transplant shock the best that we can anyways. Isn't it beautiful? I think one of my favorites of the elephant ears for sure. So as far as care is concerned, for those of you who are like me and you cannot keep this plant growing outside all year long, then uh, there are different options, really just two options. You can take it inside, put it someplace warm with a lot of light. I mean, you know, I'd say at least half a day of sunlight within a few feet of the window and a good amount of humidity and they should be okay. Don't let them dry out for too terribly long. And when I say warm, I mean, you know, ideally over 77 or around 77 with humidity above 55, somewhere in there which is essentially looking for a mild tropical environment. That'll keep them growing and looking great. Not, not everybody has those conditions in their home, right? So the other option is to put it someplace dark and cool or low light and cool. It doesn't have to be dark. You don't have to shove it in a closet or anything like that, but you can just allow them to go into a dormancy just like you would with all of your other colocasias and all the other elf and ear type plants. Or you can even overwinter them like you would a canna where you just cut everything off take the pot, make sure it's dried out. You don't want it to be moist. Once it's dried out, you can take that and like stick it under your sink, something like that. Check on it every month, make sure that there's not mold and stuff growing on the top. Stick your finger down in there, make sure that the corm, the, or the top of the bulb that is, isn't squishy. And as long as it's not, everything's good. If it is, then you need to get some copper fungicide on there, spray the top of the soil with a peroxide wash to get the mold off, those sorts of things. Generally, they're pretty easy to overwinter. And as far as the heat goes, you can keep them growing in average household conditions with a lot of light and good humidity and not necessarily having it warm. Just remember that the cooler the temperatures are, the less you're going to want to water the plant. So it can stay in like in between active growth and a dormancy. They're not going to look like this. You'll start to see some decline as the plant pulls away some nutrient from its oldest growth and they might end up being kind of stringy and weird looking by the time spring comes around, but then you pop them outside, make sure they're getting plenty of sun, warmth and water and they spring back, no problem. Pretty resilient plants. Outdoors, like I said, eight to 10, maybe seven B and up or cooler if you're gonna mulch them very heavily in a moist location is where they're going to be the least amount of maintenance. I suppose that's the way I would put that. Uh, easiest to grow in a moist location that's getting, I would say, sun for the majority of the day. But sometimes these lighter chartreuse yellow leaves, sometimes those will scorch if they get too much hot, dry sun. So if you live someplace more arid or you just, you just have really intense sun, maybe there's a lot of pavement around where you're putting the plant, then afternoon shade would probably be a good idea, especially if the plant's not growing in or near a body of water. And if you have them in the ground, expect them to spread, they will spread. They'll fill in a space. So it's something where you'll be pulling them up left and right. They're easy to pull up though. When these things start to spread, you can go and I'm not gonna do it, but you can go and you can just pluck them up and toss them, give them away. It's not too complicated. And that's pretty much all this video was. It's just a little spotlight on the lime zinger and a quick repot. I guess I should say, point out that this soil blend that I used, I used specifically thinking of this plant and some others that are going to want some similar conditions. This isn't what I would do for say like an alocasia. I would want more chunk 
in there, like to be really airy. The Xanthus Sun, like I said, they like things more on the moist side. So I went with a mixture that's airy, but still gonna hold on to it. We talked all that, you get it. It's, it's fine, I don't need to go overboard. When these do get bigger, this is, you know, about halfway full grown. It'll fill out whatever containers you put them in. It ends up looking really pretty because when they're fully hydrated and everything and haven't just been repotted, the leaves stand up a little bit more than this, not fully upright, not like a coffee cup or a bikini teeny colocasia, but a little bit more up. And these will be fanned out so you can see that sinus and the drama of the foliage. They look really good in blue containers, like an aqua or turquoise blue it goes very nicely with these leaves. Just overall a beautiful plant, a fun one to grow. This one's been very sturdy and resilient. It was the lone survivor out of the four that I got. Oh no, 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 there's one more that's down there, but it hasn't recovered like this one has. This one, <laughs> you saw that pot that it was in. This thing has been a champ. In a couple of months when I'm looking for stuff to do and I'm bored being stuck inside and it's all cold outside, I will probably be coming in here and removing these offshoots and potting them up into their own separate containers so I can have some more to play with in the springtime. If I do that, I'm sure it'll be in a vlog or something. All right, that's all. Comment down below, say hi. What's going on in your gardens? Your experiences with the lime zinger xanthosomas, especially those of you who live down south. I'm sure you see them all over the place. I just think they're, I mean, look at that. It's so much more of an exotic look than you get with a lot of the other elephant ears because they have that heavy, deep cut in the sinus really pretty they stand out nicely too should have said this before when i was describing the plant but if you put them someplace that's getting morning sun and afternoon shade in the afternoon shade they stand out so nicely because it's a bright chartreuse color that lime it really just draws your eye to the spot it's like a highlighter for a darker area in the garden not that they like the dark saying for you know later in the afternoon in a shady spot they're so pretty I right, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.